made uh, such a promise to the girls. But they've got to walk the talk. And, of course, there's technicality involved. Like, you need to get the players in camp. You need to train them. You need to give them into the basics. Because this is a developmental side that is supposed to take over from the, uh, from the Super Falcons. How many players are we seeing today that are being built up? I mean, those days you could call Nigerian players, uh, if you want Epo and the likes of them, and you could see the skills and the talent that they displayed. But if you see in our teams now, basic technical skills are sadly absent. And you need to have them in camp to be trained properly. So these are the issues that are wrong with female football. And look at the league. If I remember last time, how many of the teams could even honor matches? Most of the games were walked over. So we've got to really seriously look down and see, are we really serious about our female football in Nigeria? Mm. It's a yeah. huge question. Yeah. Big, big question. Obviously, uh, there's a system problem right there that has to be fixed. I'll take you back to the Falcons. You sound very confident uh, because uh, you say on paper they're the best side, they've got the best players. But if you look at the preparations and the, the, the consensus out there seems to be that uh, it hasn't been good enough. Do you think that's going to affect them, you know, when the competition starts? Put in mind that they get to play against Ghana, Kenya, Mali. And you see, it's not about individual talents. I know you could talk about the likes of Courtney, DK. I don't know if she's in the team. Or Shwala, or and a host of others. we got really good players. But the problem is putting them together as a team. And this, need, this needs preparations. And you cannot downplay motivation. It's not enough to make promises. People need to, footballers, I, I, I run a club, I know what it is. 90% of getting the best out of players is motivation. And when the players are not motivated, it's not a promise thing. It's, it's a let's see. And over time, when you don't have the money, trust is built. Do the players have confidence and trust in the NFF? Do they have trust in the government of Nigeria? Do they have trust that Nigeria is behind them? If anything happens to them, are the players insured? These are basic things that Nigeria as an economy has the capacity to do. But somebody needs to sit down and get some work done. So if you look at the Falcons, that's why I said on paper, they've got the talents. It's undeniable that Nigeria easily has the best talents possibly in the world. But what are we doing with it? How are we harnessing it? And how are we uh, putting them together to maintain a football culture in the teams? The coaches, what kind of training do you give them? They can't give what they don't have. Mm, interesting. You mentioned the coaches now. I mean, uh, Florence Omagbemi has got the chance, you know, to lead the Falcons uh, to the Nations Cup. Um, what do you think about her reign so far? Well, great player. Obviously, I mean, like this is how it works. You're a player, you're, you, you're, you're, you're exposed to training techniques of the highest level. If you're sharp, you're smart, you'll be taking notes, you'll be keeping them. Later on, if you know you, have, uh, uh, you, you want to go into coaching, you use them, you pick one or two people to work with. But that's not all. Football changes every day. Like, for example, you know when uh, the tikataka was uh, all over the place? Now they found a solution to the tikataka. Then football has moved on. Look at what's happening in Chelsea. He saw that his defense was leaking. He moved Victor Moses back and he's playing him as a wing back and he's playing three defenders. Yeah. Three, I mean, football is dynamic. The coaches must be exposed to this. Before tournaments, do we send them on training programs? What, do we have a relationship with any uh, sports body out there that are coaches? Do we have a production line of coaches running and coming through? I mean, look at the Super Eagles. Same players, different coach. Okay, so it, it tells you a whole lot about it because uh, well, yesterday when I was listening to you, you talked about the fact that, look, I mean, this is the lady. It's going to be her first, I mean, let's say her first international game with the Super Bowl because she took them through the qualifiers and, of course, they qualified. And she didn't even have a friendly to look at her team. The only thing she was able to get was playing around boys and some other local team. I know that there was no big test for her. For her not having that experience to look at the team at all. So it seems whatever game she's going to play against Mali will be like, more like an international first game, like what happened to the Falconets. No, can she actually exactly. surprise this hurdle? Can she, can she get something out of it? You know, there's also something in football. There's always, in Africa, there's a fear of Nigeria. Okay. Especially when it comes to female football. So when you get on the pitch, it's about 45% done. 
psychologically. But after the game starts and the people realize that, hey, these guys are not so great after all, they're not so super after all, then the pressure is going to come. And that's why you find out it's preparation that makes most of the times Nigeria loses heavily in the first games of the tournament. Because that first game is always like, I mean, that's like the training that they never, that they never had. So uh, that's what always happens to them each time. So quickly, they are in match mode. By the second game, everybody runs together. The psychologist comes. Everybody runs and talks and this, and there's pressure. And all of a sudden, there's motivation somewhere. And the Nigerians dig deep by sheer force of character. But like I say, you can do this up to the quarterfinal stage. But when you get to the semifinals, <laughs> then the journey starts. It's Africa. But the thing about Africa is that Nigeria should have long gone past Africa by now. We've dominated Africa for so long. What have the Falcons been able to achieve on the world stage, at the Olympic stage? That is where Nigeria should be looking at now. But we're just struggling to remain at the head of Africa. Mm, okay. Look at the records. Look at the records <laughs> yeah. to see where Nigeria has been. Yeah, it, it's, it's just a shame. Hopefully, on, we, we can actually make it better with the committee and everybody said of Amanji Pinnick assuring the girls is going to treat them like champions. We just can't wait for their finances to improve so they can do that. Thank you so much, Maurice, for taking our time to talk to us this morning. Thank you, guys. It's always a pleasure to talk to you guys. You guys are doing a great job, as usual. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>